Good morning, everyone. Pastor Brett here, and I just wanted to quickly um, respond to a viewer's question. Um, uh, Eric Hanley um, asks why the King James translators used hell in the New Testament, um, and specifically referring to the Greek Gehenna and Edes, which um, he correctly states are two different compartments and uh, one being paradisos, also in the Greek, Eric, and the other, um, Abraham, that's Abraham's bosom, and the other uh, was Tartarus, uh, used by Peter, um, referring to the abode of the wicked dead. Uh, so you had the abode of the righteous dead, Abraham's bosom, paradise, and the abode of the wicked dead, Tartarus. Um, and so uh, uh, these are both seen in um, the pre-incarnate um, vision of Christ uh, as he expressed the storyline using proper names. So we know it wasn't a parable. Um, and uh, um, the rich man of Lazarus. Um, so... At any rate, uh, having said that, I'll say this. Uh, Eric asks, why would they use hell? The King James translators use hell. Uh, uh, my understanding, Eric, is probably no more profound than anyone else. Um, it's just simple uh, preference. I believe that it was their preference, their choice to use that word. Um, it definitely emphasizes the flames of uh, it definitely, uh, when Jesus used the 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 Greek um, Ades, he was um, pointing to uh, that place, the Valley of Hinnom, uh, or excuse me, Gehenna. He was pointing to that place, the Valley of Hinnom, all right, where they burned all the refuse, all the trash in the city, and they threw everything, dead bodies, everything. It was all burned there, and so those flames, that that's what hell's like. And uh, um, um, why would the translators use hell? It definitely emphasized the point. Um, but I also take a lot of things in the King James Version by faith. Um, there's a lot of things that you're not going to be able to explain. Uh, and so uh, there comes a time in your walk where you're going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. One of the reasons why I cast off most modern textual critical um, information today is because I studied textual criticism for over 30 years. And I can tell you that I don't trust man, okay? I trust God. I trust the word of God more than I trust the word of men. So um, uh, uh, being fluent in New Testament Greek and, you know, trusting the... Um, the uh, manuscript tradition that the 1611 was taken from, um, those translations that were done before it, uh, and uh, a, a couple of modern English translations that use the same textual tradition, uh, the New King James Version and the um, uh, MEV, uh, I think there's a couple others that, but not many, that use the same tradition uh, of manuscripts. Uh, this is what I trust. I trust I'm a, I'm a traditional text um, believer. Uh, I, I believe in the Byzantine traditional text of manuscripts, and I believe that what was, uh, here's a Byzantine text form, yet this is not my go-to Greek translation. Um, uh, this is uh, done by, um, oh, I can't remember their names now. I just lost it. Um, yeah, well, Robinson Pierpont, um, but my trustworthy, my, my favorite Greek, um, translation is Stephanus 1550. It's what I use. I have a parallel KJV and Stephanus 1550 Greek New Testament that I use. Um, and so, um, that's what I trust as God's word, uh, in English, um, there's never really any question with the Hebrew text, uh, and so I, I hardly bring it up. Um, most variants, when we're discussing variants in the text, we're talking about the New Testament. Um, and really, the only reason why the devil made such a, a mess of the um, 
text of scripture uh, with the modern English translations is because he wants you to doubt what Jesus said. He wants you to doubt whether or not you can trust this as the you know, complete uh, word of God, the preserved word of God. Um, yeah, can you trust it? Yeah, I do. I, I trust it completely. I have no doubt in my mind that it is the word of God. But by the same token, I also know that human hands were chosen by God to translate, uh, uh, sinful human hands were chosen by God to translate a sinless spiritual message. And that message is that the um, Messiah would come and he would live a perfect life, die a sinner's death, and rise from the grave three days later. That we need to be born again through faith in that finished work of the cross and that we need to um, be surrendered to God and thus being guided by his will, his plan, his perfect plan for us, um, not only in this life, but for all eternity. I mean, this is the gospel message. It's really simple and it's not confusing. And we tend to confuse things on our own. Um, this is why I trust the word of God. I have no problem with it. Uh, in the English language, I use the 1611, well, actually the 1769, plainly revision of the 1611 translation. Here it is. This is what I trust. This is what I give out. And uh, this is what I believe is the word of God for us in this language that we speak today. Um, so um, I think that your answers were um, your understanding was was good um, um, why they chose the word hell yeah well, like I said I think maybe it was just preference um, and uh, I know that uh, uh, there comes a time when you have to believe that God knew what he was doing when he chose those men to do what they did and uh, um, I think the evidence is pretty clear brother so uh, Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift, and uh, I pray that uh, that was a blessing to you. Um, I know that you guys are all a blessing to me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for asking. Keep sending those questions, and uh, we'll see what we can do about answering them. I duck none. I will always give you what I believe the Holy Spirit has given to me, and will always come from this book right here. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. In Jesus' name.